to uh, another video in this uh, video series so in this uh, in this uh, step here we're gonna see how to add our um, hardware to our program so depending on your application your uh, PLC hardware will uh, be different so in this example I'm just gonna um, assume that we have uh, some uh, local uh, modules in this local rack and then we're gonna have also a remote rack so I'm gonna show you how to add uh, all that so uh, as we see here we have in slot 0 we have the processor I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna add an ID 16 which is uh, 16 uh, discrete input or slot slot 1 I don't have to give it a name but you can if you want and then I'm going to have um, an OB16D, uh, so that's for output. Slot 2, so analog in and out, and then in In slot three, I'm going to have, um, just going to call it um, IO net work. So I'm going to have basically uh, a communication module. And then in there, I'm going to add another rack. So we're going to communicate to this remote rack via Ethernet. So I'm going to add uh, in here a new module. So we're going to add another Ethernet card, another EN2T. Call it remote. Slot zero is fine. And we're just gonna use this for now, it's fine for the IP address. And then in this remote track now it's um, 17 slots so I'm just gonna change that and I'm just gonna have another four slots okay so slot hit apply okay and then in these four slots I'm just gonna have an analog in so now I have 16 for 16 analog channels I click OK and I'm going to have um, an 8 analog channel in slot 2 and that's pretty much it so now what we, uh, we have done here is we created a local rack that has processor in slot 0 and uh, discrete input 16 in slot 1 and discrete output in slot 2 and then in the last slot in the f in the local rack we have an ethernet module and then in there we're talking to a remote rack over the ethernet and then we're just adding an analog in and analog out so this is uh, just a simple example of how you can add your uh, PLC hardware to your project so now that uh, our hardware has been added to our project, uh, let's see what the uh, software did for us. So if we go here in this area, the controller tags, and open that up, we can see that automatically 
these uh, tags and structures were created as we were adding modules in here. So for example, uh, in here uh, we have local. So that local referred to the this local rack we have here, uh, backplane. And then we have column number one. So number one, it's correspond to slot number one in here. And then C for common. And then we have I here for inputs. So these two basically correspond to this card right here. If we open up this uh, in here, we can see some common tags and statuses we can use from the module uh, number one or in slot number one. Uh, and then if we open up the input here, we have the faults, so like channel faults, and then we have the data. So this is basically what we can use in our program to interact with that physical uh, input. So for example, this is a 16 input. So from 0 to 15 is going to correspond to the physical inputs that are uh, wired physically to this um, discrete module. Now in the same way, if you look here in slot 2, you'll say local 2 out or O, and that's going to correspond to the uh, outputs 0 to 15 again that we have in module 2. And then if we look again on the bottom here, we'll find the remote um, I and O, so that will correspond to the statuses of the rack in here that we have added. And then we have remote uh, 1 uh, C for common, so there's some uh, configuration uh, tags uh, that we can use in our program for a monitor something and so forth. But the one that we uh, typically be interested more in is the actual analog signal, which uh, it will be on the bottom here in this channel data. So this channel data 0 to 7 will correspond to those, uh, to those channels we have in this uh, remote uh, rack here uh, for, our, uh, for our data. Now, uh, in the same way, we have uh, in here for the analog outs, if we go to and then channel 0 to channel 7, will correspond to uh, this uh, slot 2, which is uh, 8 analog uh, out. Now, if you notice, I just want to quickly mention that just if you're, uh, you know, if you notice that, you see here we only have 8 channels, but the, the the module we have here is IF16, which is for 16 channels. Uh, the reason for that, because for uh, by default, uh, in the settings here, it does not uh, use the single-ended, but rather the differential. And when you use the differential, you only have like eight channels. So uh, if we want to use the single-ended, we can just come here and say we want the single-ended data or single-ended data with no alarms. And it's a float, and then we say OK, say yes, and then notice now that we have 16 channels. And if I hit apply, OK, you will notice also in here that we have now um, 16 channels rather than 8 channels. So that's just a, a quick thing I want to mention in there. Uh, so I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, please subscribe and uh, like and share. Uh, so we can continue uh, putting together this uh, content. And again, thank you for watching.